Hi everyone, my name is Min Friedman. I'm Pringai Council's Better Business Partnership Program Manager. And today I have with me two ladies who are from Rotary in Warunga. I've got Janetta Russell, who's the Membership Manager, and Janelle Spate, who's the President-Elect. Hi ladies, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Hi. Um, for people who aren't familiar with the work that Rotary does, Janetta, maybe you can just tell us a bit about what Rotary does. Give us a bit of background of the organisation. Yeah, yeah, sure, Min. Um, Rotary started by a couple of businessmen in America about 105 years ago. And uh, today there are 30, 33,000 clubs globally and 1.2 million members. So it's quite a large organisation. And if you want to look at it altruistically, um, uh, their main aim is to promote peace, uh, fight disease, and polio is a really good example of that. They've done the most extraordinary good uh, job, sorry, um, with polio and being able to eradicate that from the world. Um, they work on providing clean water and sanitation globally. Um, they save mothers and children and work really hard on education for kids in uh, third world countries. Um, our club is quite a large club. It's uh, 74 members and um, we were the first bre breakfast club in Australia. Um, uh, we've certainly had some fairly dramatic changes to the way we operate since COVID occurred. Uh, and um, yes, and as you said, I'm the membership director and uh, since July last year, we were doing quite well with our membership. We had four new members um, and um, we ha certainly had and have a healthy list of potential members in the pipeline. Uh, and in early March, that all changed and we went from being a club that met physically in a local bowling club to um, being an online club. And um, we stream Zoom online and we had great fun in early March um, inducting a, a, the first online induction. And we inducted um, a, a member um, in her driveway and the whole club was actually looking on in a Zoom uh, meeting and uh, while we inducted um, Donna and uh, that was great fun. And uh, so what we're now concerned with is more uh, the welfare of the members rather than the um, getting too many new members. And we're looking at uh, various areas. We're looking at not only the existing members and long-term members, but also uh, our newest members and also the people who are in our pipeline. Because a lot of them are doing really tough um, mental health is a really big issue with this and the isolation has been really, really hard on many people. So with uh, the way Rotary operate uh, is all about outreach and caring for others. And so we have formed a buddying system for all these people so that uh, one member will look after another. And it's not just the older uh, members looking after the new members, so uh, people looking after the long-term members as well. And that means a great deal to us. And we're also concerned that there's a lot of people doing it tough in the community. And I, I know that Janelle is uh, very keen about that. Yeah, that's, that's fabulous. What I really love to hear is um, your continuing support for your existing members. And as you said, that there's um, a lot of people are experiencing change and upheaval right now, and that can cause a bit of uncertainty and can affect people's mental health. So it's so fabulous that you're offering your members that buddy system. Um, yeah, it sounds like it's a fabulous support. And the fact that you're also still interacting with all of your members via Zoom. It's um, fabulous that you've been able to 
pivot so quickly as well for your members. And um, I imagine some people might have been having to skill up. So I know Zoom's been a new platform for me to get used to. So, you know, even the fact that um, most of your members have been able to skill up so quickly and retain that level of interaction with each other, it's definitely, um, you know, so su such, such something that's in need at the moment when people are feeling isolated and restricting how much they can actually go outside. Um, and also thank you for um, that bit of information about what Rotary does. So I know some people that might be watching this now may not know what Rotary does and their involvement with the community. So um, now we'll have a bit of a chat with Janelle because Janelle um, works on some projects and facilitates that community interaction with um, project support to other nonprofit organisations, um, particularly. Maybe Janelle, you could give us some insight as to what projects you have been doing, um, particularly in our local area if possible, and any changes that you've needed to make um, with the way that you're running projects at the moment due to COVID. Uh, yeah, sure, thanks for having us on today. Um, so we're a very, very active club. Like Janetta said, we've got a lot of members and if our members can't physically come in, we've always sort of tried to incorporate them by helping in some way by, you know, maybe writing one of our articles or um, going to speak with Rotary Matters and the Hornsby Community Station and things like that. So members can be involved at all sorts of different levels, but we're quite actively involved with Hornsby Connect, um, which is a food service that we get food waste from Oz Harvest and lots of other facilities that, you know, the food would normally be thrown out and that's given to um, on a grocery system, which people used to go into the centre, drop-in centre on Wednesdays and be able to, you know, greet people there and get some groceries at very cheap prices so that, you know, for people from low-income families or people that are um, on the streets and things like that. And it was also a way to connect with them and help them in a mental health way so that they had a conversation with someone and they were able to connect them to other services. So when the COVID-19 um, came across all of us, we've had to close that centre temporarily. Um, but what it did was it made us adapt and find new ways around it. So we set up a grocery um, box system where the groceries are put into a box and you get a small box, a medium box or a large box. And it's a mix of things. And so then we've worked out a delivery, a safe delivery way for that to go out to people so that there's less contact. Now in saying that, that's working quite well. And um, we thought about, what about Karingai? You know, there's a need in Karingai. So we've been talking to Karingai Council and uh, we have a great community link there with Denny Housius. And we've been uh, working out how we could do something in Taramara for quite a while and, you know, involve other services. So we are setting up Taramara Con um, Connect there. So, I'll be Karingai Connect, sorry, pardon me. Yeah. Uh, Karingai yeah. Connect. And that yeah. will be a similar sort of thing where it's pre-boxed groceries and food that people can get delivered in the area. And we'll be bringing people on board like Catholic Care and those kinds of services to help us because we can't do it all, but we love helping people connect together and, you know, build those kind of friendships and help each other in the community to help those in the community. So that's just one of the, the things we do. We work with... Uh, St Lucy's School and St Edmunds helping them when we can. We raise funds. We're trying to figure out ways how we can still help them. We're going to give them a lunch. Um, hands off, of course, we'll get that delivered. Um, and we're going to give them some awards online so we'll be able to, you know, just show our appreciation for all the work they do because through the COVID-19, um, <clears throat> excuse me, closure that have... Um, they have stayed open to keep those students in school so that the parents were able to go to work and to continue work because it's a different set of circumstances, um, you know, having those children at home. So it's a lot of pressure for those parents. So those helpers that have been doing that and those teachers that have taken that on, we want to thank them and help them and just know that, let them know that the community's out there thinking about them. 
Mm. Yeah, it's so important to retain those community interactions and um, be checking in with organisations, even if um, you're not actually able to continue to um, be so interactive face to face at the moment. Yes. So with um, Rotary and the way you've been managing and running your organisation, have you faced any particular challenges? Um, due to COVID in terms of the way you're running it? And if so, what, what are you doing now as a result? Um, well, yes, our fundraising came to a halt um, because we're involved with the Bobo and uh, with four other clubs. And we raise a lot of money there for Lifeline and the Women's Shelter and um, a few other organisations. Each club has somebody that they, a beneficiary they look after. Um, 50% of the funds go to Lifeline from all of the clubs. And um, that unfortunately had to be cancelled this year. But what happened was the wonderful, generous people who ride in that ride, they, um, you know, donated their entry fee, which then meant the beneficiaries could receive some monies to help keep them going because they're under a lot of pressure currently. So we've been working things like that. Uh, the community team and the youth team in our club are working very hard to run some online auctions or raffles um, in the future. So we're just working through all that now. So it's making us adapt and change and some things for the better, you know, we're having more efficient meetings online. Um, but yes, there's those kinds of things we've had to adjust to. But the, the other ways we used to do things was very much about being out in the community and meeting with people and uh, selling raffle tickets or helping marshalling the Bobo or, you know, sell it, um, the Salvo's collection. We'd help count the money for that and lots of other things. So all of that's had to stop at the moment, but that's just temporarily. We like to think of it as it's just a temporary bump in the road. You know, that's the future, but, you know, maybe we'll be more efficient in this way and maybe we can bring more people in to listen to our meetings and we're having a diversity um, cultural cooking night with the Rotary Club. It's a meeting and we're getting our members who have come from other wonderful cultures to come in and, and um, demonstrate their, their meals on the Zoom meeting oh, so and so talk good. about that. So that's helping us connect to their communities and, and we'll distribute that through um, the Women's Shed in the PCYC because we have a lot to do with the PCYC Hornsby Green Guy and uh, the women shed there and a little group, group called Mix, the multicultural group, we will we'll share that with them. And so we make connections in that way and then they'll share things with us. So we we'll really like to see what we can do in the local community and keep connected with everyone. Yeah, fabulous. And will that be um, that cultural um, work that you're doing, will that be a recorded session? Is that something that we can share as well on BBP? Well, we hadn't thought of that, but I'll <laughs> note that down. <laughs> yeah, and we yeah. will record some of it. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. fabulous. Yeah, yeah. we've That's got some fabulous. great members in our club with amazing experience. So yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah, I mean, you guys are doing such fabulous work for the community um, locally, um, you know, with your work with Hornsby Connect and then bringing that um, into Karingai, hopefully in the near future. And, you know, some of the work that you're doing, just facilitating those continual connections during this time, I think is just so important. Um, yes you know, with organisations maybe feeling left out of the loop. And, and as you say, with the fundraising, it's, um, it sounds like you've needed to make some changes there. And um, maybe possibly you're even able to use this time um, to be able to plan and um, make yes. changes for, you know, possibly plans of how you're going to be fundraising again in the future. Would you say, would you say anything about uh, that? Yes, definitely. I think it's made us sit down and look at things, take time, you know, have a breath, um, which I think is very important to slow it down and have a look at what you're doing instead of charging full steam ahead and, you know, maybe missing vulnerable people or people that want to come and, you know, be a part of an organisation. We really want to reach out to people in the community, businesses and things as well that may be feeling quite isolated. And I think, I know Janetta feels very strongly about this. In the local communities, uh, businesses in Warunga and, and on the North Shore where we are situated, 
that if they feel very vulnerable to get in touch with us and we might be able to help in some way or you know just keep them connected we're very open about our meetings um we love to welcome people in to see what we do and everything and i'd just like to mention we do have an international committee as well i don't want to forget about them who do a lot of great work in india and nepal and places like that rebuilding houses and helping them with recycling and plastics and that and that's all done from here locally as well um, and then people do travel over there which is not happening at the moment, but they're still fundraising as well. They're organising an online trivia night. Oh, um, great. Yeah, so it'll be an entry fee to get in and all that sort of thing, which then will help. Um, but yes, we're, we're trying to keep in touch with everyone in the best way we can. And our website has the secretary's email address or you can contact us through Facebook for those things. Yeah, fabulous. All right. Well, that um, I mean, I just love what you guys are doing and your continual interaction with um, the local community. And um, it sounded like, Janetta, you wanted to add something more to that as well for local yeah. businesses? Yes, yes. Um, I did some research about five years ago. I started it on just businesses in Warunga. And I was astounded that there were 700 registered businesses in Warunga. And a lot of them were just run out of their homes. And uh, the most incredibly interesting, diverse group of businesses. Uh, and that's what brought on what Janelle's just been saying, the feeling that we always concentrated on the businesses, which we still do, like the SAM, and um, that they are very large and they do a great deal in the community. But there are also... So these unknown who are worth trades um, and um, uh, just doing a graphic design, a whole range of different things out of their homes and probably just not being able to connect locally at all. And I think that's so important. Yeah, absolutely. And that's um, definitely a lot of what you do as part of Rotary is um, connecting businesses, just like what we do with BBP as well. So, um, yeah, so thank you so much, both of you, for your time today. It's been really fabulous to have a chat and to hear more about what Rotary is doing and how you're adapting and how you're continuing your support with the community as well as businesses, as well as um, your also membership base as well. So, so what I'll do is, um, as part of this is I'll put um, Janetta and Janelle's contact details um, as part of the comments on after this Facebook post. If anyone wants to get in touch with Rotary Warunga, then um, they can feel free to get in touch with Janetta or Janelle. And um, also any Karingai businesses that are out there who aren't part of BBP, and if you would like to become a member of the Better Business Partnership Program for Karingai, then I'll also put my contact details there as well. So feel free to give um, me a call or send me an email, um, or you can visit our website as well, and I'll put, the, or put all those details after the Facebook post. Okay, thanks so much, Janetta and Janelle. It was fabulous having you here today. And you. Um, yeah, you take care. Yes, thanks very much. Goodbye. Okay, bye.